Cocaine Cowboys, The Deadly Rise of Ireland's Drug Lords, the live show is on sale now. We're on the road on February 10th at the Lime Tree Theatre in Limerick, February 15th in Cork's Everyman Theatre and on Sunday 18th we're back at Dublin's Three Olympia. April takes us to Galway's Town Hall Theatre, Killarney's INEC and Belfast's Waterfront Studios. Check mcd.ie or venue for ticket sales. It'd be hard to find a more Irish name than Maurice O'Shea. And then to link him to the Sinaloa cartel is just quite an extraordinary story. It is. Um, it is absolutely he Irish? Is. Well, he, like he is Irish. He is, he went to school in Calorglan Community College. Right. So um, I remember we did actually did the first stories, sundayworld.com did the very first story about him and uh, somebody emailed me in and he said, oh, he was a bit of a boy racer in Calorglan. Right. So, I mean, that was, uh, and I was thinking, I remember uh, saying it to the lawyer and saying, oh, can you say that he was a boy racer? I said, well, they are accusing him yeah. of being the head of a cell of the Sinaloa cartel, the absolute chief of that. So I think you'd get away with boy racer. It probably would. If he wants to write in and say, I'm not a boy racer, we'll absolutely put that in. So first, what age is he? Well, he is in his Early 30s. Okay. So, I mean... And how the, did he get from Calorgolan to the Sinaloa, the Sinaloa cartel? And then you're talking... Well, he's accused of being at the very top of, mm. of a, a wing of the, the Sinaloa cartel. Mexico's infamous drug gang. Uh, yes. It is accused that he was based in Chile and he directed the Sinaloa cartel's uh, operations in Chile. But what we know of Maris O'Shea Salazar is that he was born in Mexico... His father is from Calorglan and his mother is Mexican. And his father uh, seems to have died as, as a result of a tragic accident while in Mexico. And in the aftermath of his father's death, he relocated to, to Kerry and spent his teenage years there, um, lived there, was involved in boxing, went to school, may or may, not have, may, or may not have been a boy racer. Right. Um, he was known... Uh, you know, this is a, a number of years ago, but he was known as the Mexican in, in right. Calorglan. Which basic, is basic. Pretty basic, yeah. Um, and that he was, uh, I think there was a great quote in the star, uh, he kept himself to himself. I know everybody, they say this about everybody, but some local has said, but he kept himself to himself. But people say he was a nice guy, an engaging child. Mm. A bit of a messer, for sure. Got in a bit of trouble. Uh, did end up before the courts as a teenager for a, some sort of possession of a weapon. Uh, may have even gone to prison for a week or two. Um, but, you know, n no signs of rising to the, uh, what he's accused of, rising to the very top of international drugs trade. But we see, um, the reason we're talking about him now is that... Uh, this week, we're recording this on, on Tuesday, yesterday and on Monday, his uncle was convicted in Chile of running, uh, of their role in the running of this cell of the Sinaloa cartel. Right. Now that Salazar surname may ring a bell to people if they followed the podcasts on, on El Chapo, because El Chapo's first wife is a woman called Marie Salazar Fernandez. Mm. She is the, the the mother of the sons, okay. if you know what I mean. Yes. The Chapitos, because, the most, yes. who are arguably the, the most infamous uh, operators. Who took over after Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was eventually tracked down to the jungles and was extradited to the US where he was tried and has been sentenced to like a million squillion years in prison exactly. by the Americans. Yes, so he's serving that million squillion. Yeah. But while he is serving the million squillion, his, his sons, the Chapitos, have taken over. Yeah. Now they are the sons of Maria Salazar Fernandez and she is a relative of our pal of in Calorgla. Morris. Yes. That's ridiculous. Morris O'Shea. This is ridiculous. Well, it's, it, you know, it is. It, it, it's, it's unlikely um, so when did Morris, or Mo, as he might have been known, go to Mexico? So this this cell is accused of, um, you know, um, being the agents for the Sinaloa cartel. And the investigation has occurred in Chile. Um, they've appealed for the extradition of Morris Jose Chalazar. Um, he hasn't been extradited yet because he obviously hasn't been tracked down. He seems to have been moving between 
uh, Mexico and Spain. And the accusation is it focuses, as these investigations tend to, they mm. focus on a period of time. Um, this is basically during the COVID-19 pandemic. They're talking about a period in, in sort of 2020, 21, and they're saying this cell um, moved 6,000 kilos of cocaine. They were buying it in Bolivia, mm -hmm. uh, bringing it to Chile, and then bringing it from there to Spain. To, to Europe. So this is the wing of the Sinaloa cartel that was moving the drugs rather than to the US, we're moving it directly to Europe, to Belgium and to Spain. What year? Um, well, it's 2000 or 2020, 2021. Mm, it's interesting um, because they, of course, you know, haven't really been focused on Europe. No, they haven't, but they there has been more talk that there they have been. There has been more been, talk of them, yeah. Yeah. And They've been featuring, the Mexicans have been featuring in, in Europol reports and that they had developed cell structures in particular around the port of Antwerp. Yeah, so they they were, they, that's exactly right. They were mm. doing it in two ways. They were saying it was being shipped in through, the, through ports, to the port in Antwerp and also um, a certain amount going in through airports, possibly in Spain. Right. So they're talking 6,000 kilos, which is six tons over that period. That's the, the what they're talking about. And the, the people that have been convicted, Ricardo, the, the uncle of our man, he was in charge of according, he's been convicted of the drug trafficking offences, Found guilty, Sorry, yet like, to be yeah, yet our to be man. sentenced. Right, <laughs> our 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 uh, Kerry man, our man. So Mara what? Soche. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like so, that, the, you know, the even yeah. The so Mara, so what they say actually in the court documents is Ricardo. He he recruited people. He directed this export of six thousand kilos of cocaine, and um, it was sent to Europe. Um, and he was paid ten million dollars for for his work. Mm. And they say it was instructed by his nephew, Morris O'Shea. Morris O'Shea's uncle is El Chapo, yeah? No. No. Morris Back O'Shea's uncle is convicted yeah. in Chile and he's sent to prison. What's his relationship then with El Chapo? Well, we do, all that is said is they are a relative. Oh, so, so you're presuming... Details, cousins don't, or something. Something like that. Mm. But there is a direct relation, I think, is how it's described. Mm. So be a pretty famous sort of relative to have, wouldn't it? It'd be a famous relative to have. El Chapo. Yeah. So I mean, that's it. It's two steps away from El Chapo, basically. Yeah. Um, to Kilorgan, uh, boy racing, and yeah, you know, and whatever there, else. Has there photographs of him emerged there around Kilorgan? Or there has been one photograph, yeah. and I mean, we had our our, our sister paper, and the Kerry man had a great interview with people uh, as well, and a bit of details about him coming before the courts, and also uh, there was details in one of the papers about how he the, the his family he remained in touch with people from Kilorgan over the years on Facebook and would send them messages and. People obviously didn't know he was... Little gifts from Mexico. Well, they didn't know he was accused, yeah. but he, he he kept in touch with people. And so like any of these sort of uh, suspected um, cartel, you know, cell bosses or whatever, he could be in a jungle hideout? Well, he could be. I mean, I think there was, he was certainly living in Barcelona for an extended period of time and in other locations in Spain. Um, and he was certainly moving between Mexico. But there is the the direct claim in the court documents that he is the he is the overall leader of it and he mm. was directing operations. Um and that you know, the want for extradition on that basis to to Chile to face a similar court case than his relatives have faced this week. Um so it's an amazing story. Um, story. I wonder is Morris an, an a Mexican name as well? Because I notice it's spelled M O R or I S as opposed to Morris. Would you not spell Morris as the Irish way? M A U or I don't I know. See. I don't know. No, I th I think that is the Irish. I think that's O'Shea, Morris O'Shea Morris. Is, the, is. And he was that's known. your name to pick for a young man. Like It may be so. It's like one of those old fashioned names, isn't it? Maybe so. I mean, I think he was born in Mexico. Um, right. And then ended up in Ireland uh, and was spent his early years in Mexico with his father, who seems to have maybe died in a, it's certainly been reported that he died in a traffic accident in Mexico. Mm. I mean, it's an incredible uh it's incredible. I mean, I remember we we actually published this story first and thinking it just did, did, did it look like a joke? Well, it looked like yeah, we're going to end up an egg on his face. Is it some because yeah. <laughs> you know you often see um, uh, like an Irish citizen has been arrested in this place and that place, and you'll you'll find they've never been to Ireland and yeah, know nothing about it, and they somehow get you know get a passport through the old 
granny rule, I suppose, yeah. something similar than people used to end up playing for the Irish international team on the basis of having a, a distant relative, you know, a, yeah. a grandparent. But this is, it's not the case. And how did it pop up in the first place? It popped up in, um, in, in the fact that there's really, really sad, pathetic people. Yeah. That I won't, that, that, that may be slightly grey and getting yeah. a bit old. Who, who most days of their life Google the words Irish and arrested right. to see if they can find stories. Right. That's how you came across it. So they That's were describing him it. as that. And he, yeah, an Irish, an Irish Mexican dual citizen. Yeah. Arrested. So I think I searched, which I do most days of my life. It's really not an, uh, no, it's an indication of how... Find, uh, yeah, so... When you've come up with a, a gem like Morris O'Shea... Yeah, Irish... The you know, arrested man. cocaine probably, mm, and yeah. the search comes of Maris O'Shea. Maris O'Shea can't be. Yeah, but it was. And, giving uh, away some of the tricks of your trade there. There you go. People have to have listened to the whole extended podcast though to get. They have to listen this far to get that little gem. Have to be a rival news editor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Most people have said, "Gosh, who, yeah. who bothers listening to, listening him? to that nonsense?" But yeah. it's ex- absolutely amazing. And El Chapo Guzman, of course, his one of his sons has been arrested and is being extradited because they went in to the military, went in in Mexico to uh, take down some of those chapitos, as they call them. And there was a huge, big shootout. And like, I think 40 members of the military were killed during it and they had to kind of release them. Yeah. But they then went back and it was around sort of the time that um, Joe Biden was visiting and it was seemed to be a very political thing to take out these heads, as they call them, of yeah. the these big cartels. It stops nothing, as we've spoken about no, before. I mean, funnily enough, they put up, then after that, <clears throat> they put up all these signs around the place saying we're no longer selling fentanyl. The, 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 the Sinaloa cartel thing. Yeah. Like, leave us alone, we stop selling fentanyl. We're just stealing we'll, cocaine. We'll just, we'll just stick with the cocaine. Maybe yeah. the, the Americans will leave us alone a bit. But it's extraordinary the amount of people, you know, that are working in that, within that cartel and the effects it's had on Mexico is just absolutely terrifying. But, I mean, you talk about the war on drugs being a yeah. losing battle. Yeah. And I think that really is where it shows up, isn't it? You get these big heads back and they go on trial in, in New York. I mean, Chapo Guzman was on trial in Brooklyn court. Yeah. Traffic was stopped across Manhattan Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge, um, as he was brought under high security. Of course, he'd escaped previously. Very embarrassing for um, the Mexican government. When he did escape, he dug a, dug himself out of a prison there. Um, and, you know, his wife, a very sort of... His, his new wife. Glamorous yeah. new wife appeared yeah. with him. And it was all a big show scene. The whole trial was extraordinary. And he goes to jail and you hear nothing about him since. And I was talking recently to one of our colleagues um, who's written a lot about it. And he says that he's locked up for more than 23 hours a day. Yep. He's complained about his human rights, but the Americans just literally throw away the key, don't they? They really do. I mean, it's incredible, uh, those supermax. Is it the supermax prison, yeah. I think they call it? In Colorado. Uh, like if you think about it, I mean, we sometimes make complaints about easy prisons here, but I mean, there's there's just is nothing there. There is They absolute- don't see daylight and stuff. I don't know how yeah. I feel about that, about yeah, you know, and the, the human being. Okay, I'm not saying that El Chapo Guzman should be treated uh, yeah, but they, well, but I mean, I don't agree with a human being being locked up in a room with no light and no... As well, know, like these people have, uh, you know, they have no chance of parole for the most no. part. Sure they don't. I mean, they're not... They're they not, will be locked up for the rest. They will die in prison. Yeah. Um, and so it does seem, it, it you know, it's 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 a tough punishment, it you know. It's very hard for a human being to get to, to come to terms with that. It must be very hard. I mean, it must put your under terrible uh, pressure. Look. Because you even hear like, I mean, here when somebody will get a life sentence for murder or whatever, they are automatically put on suicide watch in prison while they get used to it. But they tend to live for the appeal. You know, that seems to be the first hurdle. Yeah, but they over. are, I mean, they are rewarded in the Irish prison service for, yeah. uh, you know, rehabilitation attempts. Um, so you do see, I mean, we had a story recently uh, about Craig White, who was, I think he was the first person convicted in relation to murder for the, the Crumlin Drimna feud. But he's already a good way along the line, f- f- you know, 14, 15, 16 years. I can't remember exactly what, where, you know, he w- he was out and having a part-time job coming back to prison. And that was on the basis of 
that he had showed genuine rehabilitation. He disassociated himself from criminals behind bars. He wasn't involved in, in, in you know, the trouble in prison and doing education courses. So they do allow, you know, and it does seem more humane, mm. I have to say. Mm. But it is. There's no doubt about it. So Morris O'Shea, we will keep uh, an eye on proceedings. Yeah, the, the, the is it your favorite story? It's of kind of my year? favorite story. I do like it. Like I have to do say, you, yeah. I do like it. Um, well, I mean, a you found it. Yeah, in your little yeah sort of morning Deaky, routine. Deaky pursuits. Um, Deaky pursuits, and b it is. I mean, while none of the activities behind the Sinaloa cartel are funny, it is just just ridiculous that we have a, a, an Irish guy. Well, do you know my favorite stories? My favorite crime stories are. The stories where you where you, somebody would say, "I cut that doesn't sound real at all." Yeah, do you know? It is. That's ridiculous. Yeah, when sometimes uh, fact is stranger than fiction. Yes, uh, Donald. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent, and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs, and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.